Hey everyone, I'm Mecca here. How's it going? In this video, I want to talk to you about one of the books. It's one of my favorite books now, and uh, it had such an impact on my life. That is this. It's the four hour work week. So I don't know if you want to call this a book review. Probably not. This is going to me, this is going to be me just giving some thoughts, um, some lessons that I learned from this book. I got my journal here with some notes. Uh, nothing planned here, so I'm just going to go off the cuff, so to speak. But let me start off by saying I first found out about this book a number of years ago, and uh, somebody recommended, or I heard about it. And I was talking to somebody that I wanted to read it, and they're like, "Oh no, that book's kind of like a." A sham or whatever it is, it doesn't make sense working four hours in a work week. That's just fairy tale, you know, voodoo or whatever. And this book is not about working four hours in a work week. It's it's anything uh, but that. I really think, to me, that this book is about how to think differently, and that's one of the things that I just absolutely loved about the four hour work week. Is it teaches you? It actually it teaches you how to think differently. When I first started reading this, I was just blown away at, at how Tim Ferriss uh, had designed this book. It's not just a read from beginning to end. It's, you read it and you can tell, like I, I highlight stuff in it and underline and you know, it's, there's, there's exercises, there's examples of what to say to your boss, there are scripts, there's online resources you go through. This is really, it's probably one of the greatest textbooks ever made. That's what this book is. And um, well, yeah, let me kind of dive into it a bit more. So think differently. Um, if you've been watching my stuff for a while, you know I'm kind of against the grain, against what society says, against the norm. I am just one of those people who has to go against everything else because I just, I got firm beliefs and ideas and I just think things should be, like, you don't, you don't have to be a factory worker, you know, you don't have to go to school, get a job, die. Like, that's just not life. That's, that's just waiting to die, basically. That's, that's not living. I'm somebody who really believes that, no, it's like kind of do live life on your own terms. Do the things you want to do. Uh, there is like just find whatever you want to do, find a way and get it done. That's just my belief and my philosophy and just how I am. And this book really helped resonate that point. Um, so let's talk about a few things. One of the things he talks about is really, it's just leveraging your, t your time, uh, figuring it. how much is your time worth? How can you get more done with less time? And utilizing, we, he goes to chapters in here on virtual assistants, how to get somebody like, for example, over in the Philippines, how do you, uh, you know, you end up paying them like three, $5 an hour, which seems like for, you know, depending on where you're watching this, if you're stateside, it's not a lot of money, but when you translate it into, don't know what their currency is called. It's actually a significant amount of money for them. Not significant, but it's more than what you'd be paying somebody over here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but just how to use virtual assistants to take care of meaning, you know, tasks that are just repetitive, that are so small, they have to get done. But for you to do them yourself, it's just a complete waste of your time and 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 resource basically so you just get somebody else to do them for you and I just really love that concept because it's helped free up so much of my time you know my month my, my month end income reports right I have a VA do all of those I don't even have to think I just say all right month end here are the spreadsheets boom and she pulls all the data and everything for me and just gives it back to me in a, in a day or so and uh, that would have taken me like you know hours to take care of and she, you know now it literally takes me 30 seconds to send an email and then it's, it's, it's done and it costs me five bucks. So being able to outsource those type of things is, it's key. And he kind of like, he has a whole system inside the book, uh, you know, how to like automate your life and the different things that you should automate and going on here. And but this obviously is not going to be the best review for it. It's just my, my thoughts of what I got from the book. I'm just checking my journal here. And um, uh, 
another thing I loved was uh, the email system. You know, especially as the channel grows, I get more and more emails and uh, get a little busier. One of the things that I love is um, he shows you how to screen people who you th who might be just kind of I can't remember what he calls her. I just call them time wasters. Uh, you, you know, and he shows you how to screen them, and that's just that's just smart because time is the one thing that's equal to all of us, right? Time, right? We all have twenty four hours. Doesn't matter how rich, poor, whatever. We all have twenty four hours, and that time is the one equalizer. And he really just shows you how to maximize that amount of time that you have, and so prevent it from being wasted on stupid tasks. You know, some other really neat things that uh, he talks about is learning how to say no. And I'm guilty of that. I'm a people pleaser. I, I, I really like being able to extend my hand and, and help people and whatnot. But you have to also learn how to pick and choose when's the best time to help people. And uh, for me, that's something I've always struggled with because I just like to help everybody. But helping everybody is not the best, is not the best thing. Um, oh, another thing I'm wasting time is you can, oh, this was a really neat thing. There's these different, uh, what would you call them, apps that you can install in your computer and they track how much time you spend on certain certain uh, websites, for example, YouTube, right? Um, and uh, like I used to spend so much time on YouTube watching Casey Neistat videos or, you know, car videos and, and stuff. So I installed some of these apps and what they actually do is they block out that, that domain. So when the app's activated, I cannot go to YouTube. And there's a few different ones that one, some where you can bypass, some like you, you can bypass, but it's like four steps. There's one, I didn't use this one because I was like, oh, what if I have to get to YouTube? It, it's like you could bypass it, but or like you can set block this site for 24 hours. You can delete it and it'll still block that site for 24 hours. I don't know how it does that, but yeah. But so just different things like that to help zero in on your productivity because like we I'm guilty of it. I'm sure you're guilty of it. We all waste time with stupid things that we shouldn't be doing that are just not as you know that are just not having the same type of impact um, on our lives that we should be. But you can see I've I've highlighted so much in this book and you know batching is another thing that I'm trying to get good at. Batching is as simple as you you know for example for the videos right sometimes I do them what you know one video a day type of thing. I literally will film a video a day. Sometimes I'll film like four or five videos at once, and that's batching because when you do four or five at once, it's just you only set the camera up once, and boom, you just you can pump out a couple of videos and then upload them over a period of days. And by doing stuff like that, it's just so much easier to get it all done at once. For example, like when you're running errands, right? It's better to go leave your house, go run errands a whole bunch at once, then return home versus, you know, running out to the bank and then coming home, then going grocery shopping and coming home, then going to a post office and coming home. Like then that's how you ruin your entire day. So getting them all done at once is just so much more effective and efficient and frees up your mental energy so much better. So that's what he kind of gets into when it comes, when, when it talks batching. There was another quote in here I really loved. Here it is. It says, 99% of the people in the world are convinced they're incapable of achieving great things, so they aim for uh, the, me the mediocre. Like, just genius. That's so true. And that's really how we're, we're programmed, right? We're conditioned. You know, going through school, it's just, you, you know, you, you talk to somebody who's like, yeah, no, I'm like, like, one of my, one of my goals one of my ultimate goals and i've had this goal since i've been like uh, 15 16 maybe is to have a yacht like have a like have a nice yacht why i love the ocean i love the caribbean i love freedom and having a yacht means i have freedom not because the yacht gives me freedom but because i've done everything right that i can blow 20 million dollars on a yacht Right. That's that's how I that that's just that's how my mind works. Right. When I 
tell my wife, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I want to get it. Like we need to go get a 911, right? And it's, she's like, oh, what about this and this and this? Well, yeah, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have, it doesn't mean like before we buy, you know, the third or fourth house, you're going to get a 911. It means that when I can go and buy the 911, we have like three or four or five houses. Like, but I, I don't focus on the houses. I focus on the, on, I guess it's the material aspect for me because the 911 is more motivation, is more motivating than the three, four houses. If that makes sense, right? Like it's for me getting up in the morning and be like, ah, okay, I got to do all this to get closer to the 911 goal gets me more excited than, oh, okay, I got to do all this to get me closer to the four or five houses because I know I'm responsible enough. I know enough about money that I'll get the four or five houses first before I blow 200 grand on 911. I, I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my mind. And that's just one of the things that he really, really just keeps hammering through is just some people are just wired differently. And instead of trying to fight it, and instead of trying to, you know, wire yourself to go with society and to go the normal way of thinking and just go the opposite, go the way that works best for you. And that's really, that's really what I think the four hour work week is all about. It's not just working four hours in a, in a week. That's boring. People like people who read this, you, you do not like as much as you think you want that type of lifestyle. It's boring four hours in a week. It's setting yourself up so you can, so you can work four hours in a week, but you choose not to because there's bigger things that you want to go after. There's more excitement. There's just more. So really this book is about thinking differently, understanding that people are hardwired differently and embracing that and leveraging your time so you can get more done and make more money so that if one week you do want to work four hours, you can work four hours in that week and make what would be the equivalent of six months income. Like that's really kind of, at least from my thoughts on this book. So yeah, I, I hope this made sense. I really did. I feel like I might have been rambling on a little bit, but this book really it it had it had a good impact on me because a lot and I'll I'll end with this that you know the 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 job that I have right now is I just make calls for um, for lady and you know I started back home and uh, we wanted to move to Mexico. How do, how do you take the job, right? You don't want to quit. We couldn't quit because I wasn't going to work in Mexico for pesos. So I had to figure out a job and this, this gave me ideas. And I went to my boss, hey, can I start working from home like a couple days? Like I don't need to be at the office. There's nothing at the office for me. I have a phone at home. I can use that. Okay. Then, you know, hey, let's go to Mexico. Can I continue the job from Mexico? Like it'll still work. I'll have a phone, Canadian number and... I'll still get it done. And that was well over a year ago, almost two years ago. And this book basically gave me the blueprint on how to do that. That's like the thing different that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, you know, without it, like who, I probably would have quit and tried to figure something else out, make, making tacos or something. I don't know. But that's really what... Uh, I am. I'm trying to get across in this message. I don't know. I'll take a look at the video and hopefully I don't just trash it. But uh, if you have not read this book, read it. Uh, you know, he's he's in your face. Definitely. He's in your face. He's, uh, you know, he calls it like he is. He's a straight shooter. But uh, I really, really, really do recommend uh, you check this book out. I'll, 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 I'll leave a little link in the description uh, for you to pick up the, the Kindle version or the, uh, the, the, the I got the hard copy. I like books, right? Paper, you know, actual books. So, you know, I just buy the hard covers. And, uh, but yeah. So anyways, hey, if you're new, uh, nice to meet you. How's it going? Check out my other videos. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing for everyone else. Cannot wait to see you guys on the next video. Make sure you reach out to me, comments or Facebook. And uh, yeah, can't wait to connect. Take care.